Hello, this is Paul Check. Today I thought I would share something with you that might really help you decrease stress on your neck and complications from traditional squatting using what's called a high bar squat position. And I'd like to introduce you, for those of you that are not familiar with the low bar squat position, which is something I learned when I had a full head of hair from studying uh, the famous power lifter Fred Hatfield's work, although the low bar squat position is pretty commonly used in powerlifting competitions for a variety of reasons. But today I want to focus on the issue of the neck. I've rehabilitated countless numbers of neck injuries of all types and spent years studying the neck, which is a very, very complex part of the human body. And when we look at how, when we're, first of all, when we're squatting, people can get up to some pretty heavy weights. I mean, I've even had many female clients that can squat e easily up to uh, two times, almost two times or two times their body weight. So um, what we want to pay attention to here is the fact that when you're using what's called a high bar squat position, which I'll show you what it looks like on the bar, the high bar is when the bar sits above the spine of the scapula and rests up on the upper trapezius. So if I was just doing a standard high bar squat position, which is the standard squat position people learn, typically in exercise certifications, then I would put the, the bar right in the meat of my upper trapezius muscles. And so when I stand up, you can see that the bar is resting right at the beginning of the thoracic spine and the end of the cervical spine. So to look at that a little more closely, your seventh cervical vertebra is there, that's the first thoracic vertebra. Your trapezius muscles come right down here and fill this area. So if we put that bar right where it typically is in the meat, then what happens is as a person's bending forward, the load on the bar, remember if you hang a, a, a plumb line from the bar, you can see where the gravitational load's going, but many people don't have ideal squat technique. So as you're dropping down and you bend forward, the weight of the bar is shearing forward. In other words, it's trying to run downhill. So what happens is when you start bending forward like that, if the bar is in that high bar position, it can easily start shearing up and pushing into the spine. So what happens is it actually acts like a, a manual therapy mobilization, like a, a physical therapist or a chiropractor putting a lot of pressure on the vertebra to mobilize it. But when you have potentially hundreds of pounds on a bar or even 135 or even 95 or even 45, uh, you know, an empty Olympic bar is 45 pounds. So imagine when you got 45 pounds of focalized pressure pressing around right the end of the spinous process, it creates shear forces. So the vertebra slides forward. If this one's being pressed on, shears it forward. Now inside there's your spinal cord nerve roots. So what you often see happening over time, if squat technique is not carefully monitored, is that that bar starts creating shear that produces inflammation in the facet joints that you see along the spine here. And it can start impinging on nerve roots and irritating and exciting muscles in the area to try to brace it, which cuts down circulation and leads to a lot of complex problems such as inflammation and joint laxity. Every time you stretch those ligaments like that, it gets a little looser over time. And so then you can have a long list of uh, symptoms. Some of the common symptoms are if you reach back like that, you get uh, numbness and tingling or numbness or tingling in the little finger, sometimes the lateral side of the ring finger. It can go up the arm and can even be up in the armpit. So that can create all sorts of problems. And those are symptoms that are also common with a, 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 a diagnosis of thoracic outlet, which means that the nerves coming out of your neck to feed your arm are getting strangled, but it can be thoracic outlet-like outlet -like symptoms coming from instability in the spine or compression. As you're going down into the squat, the vertebra can shear forward and pinch nerve roots or pinch the spinal cord. This is an extremely common problem 
amongst weightlifting athletes, and especially with people doing stuff like CrossFit, where they're hammering the hell out of themselves, getting tired, and trying to do things very, very quickly, where there's little attention to the detail of good form. It's more about <laughs> trying to be a superhero and see how badly you can torture yourself to finish up what mom and dad uh, started, <laughs> as a metaphor. So now if we look at the low bar position, the low bar position brings the bar down just below the spine of the scapula. So the beauty of that is now that you have your shoulder blades, your scapula also supporting the bar. The, one of the challenges of that position is, is you don't have that nice perch here in the scapular fossa where you can rest the bar and the muscle and hold it on there. So it's a, a bit of a trickier position to learn and it requires that you learn how to manage holding the bar effectively. And if you don't have enough flexibility in your chest and the external rotators of your shoulder, then a low bar position can be challenging. But if you're having a hard time doing a low bar squat position because of those reasons, it means that your body's already out of balance. So if you get my book, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy and follow the 20 stretch tests in there and the instructions for correcting mu uh, muscle imbalances with the correct stretches, you can go a long way to improving your performance in everything. So now to look at a low bar squat position. Now you want to start, if you're a beginner at this, with a wide grip. So typically I'll go out to the hash marks on the bar, put my ring finger on there, and that's kind of my measuring for getting underneath there. Then where it used to be here, now I slide the bar down below the spine of the scapula. Now I've developed my flexibility, so I'm more comfortable bringing my hands in, but over that had to happen over time is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that. So now you kind of perch that bar right below the spine of the scapula and your deltoids help give it a little support. And you pick that up and then now you've got a much nicer position and it does not cause even close to the load through the neck and your bar is getting supported not only by the scapula but by the entire rib cage. Now I'm very intimate with these issues because uh, probably 10 or more years ago now, I was doing a lifting stunt. People used to ask me to lift them up and put them over my head because it got out from my students that I did that for great big strong dudes that thought they were tough guys and I'd pick them up and they could never pick me up. But one time I was tired and I should have said no and somebody asked me to do it. And I told the guy, you got to keep your body real stiff when I pick you up in the air. I can't hold on to you. And I threw him up in the air and he got scared and buckled, came down on my head full force. And it pushed my head to the side and it sounded like a big piece of dry wood snapping in the forest. And it blew out the ligaments of my neck, blew a couple of discs out, pinched the spinal cord, pinched the nerve roots shut the entire left side of my body down to where I had all sorts of atrophy, which then would jump from side to side because it was spinal cord compression. So it took me about five years using infant development and a variety of corrective exercise techniques to stabilize that, but I had to stop squatting for quite a while because just the weight of the bar up here was stressful. And even when I got better, I found any time I used a high bar squat, no matter how good my form was, the load of the bar going through the vertebra produced so much shear that it almost usually took me about three or four days to recover and it would shut muscles down. So that's when I said, okay, I better switch to a low bar squat position. And then I found that I was able to not only squat without pain, but I was able to build my squat back up comfortably which is something that I hadn't been able to do for a long time. And I've uh, had to help many, many athletes with these kinds of problems, which is how I was familiar with all these techniques. So there's your tip for the day. If you're having any kind of neck problems or you want to prevent neck problems, go to a low bar squat position, unless you're already very, very comfortable and skilled at using a high bar position and you have good upright squat form. It's the people that have a tendency to lean forward too far in the squat. When you're squatting, the weight should be about equal between the balls of the feet and the heels all the way through the movement. 
So another tip for you, if you are squatting and you notice your weight's going too far forward and there's more weight on the front of your foot than the heel, you can simply lift your toes up inside your shoe so your toes just come up off the ground. That has the functional effect of shortening your foot and tends to pull your center of gravity backwards and it trains people to stay on top of their functional foot. And then once you're good at that, you can just let the toes back down on the ground. So it's a neurological trick to train a person to keep the bar in the optimal bar path. So there's a little Paul check trick or two for you today. Enjoy squatting. And if you wanna go heavy and you just wanna give yourself a little extra insurance, then practice using the low bar squat in your warmups and get yourself comfortable with it and get your flexibility. Then on your heavy days, I would recommend switching to a low bar squat position just for prevention and, and uh, minimizing the risk of um, micro trauma and accumulated trauma to the spine because all of a sudden one day you got a problem, you don't know how you got it. So have fun in the gym, take good care of yourself, live fully, love yourself, and don't forget to eat, move, and be healthy the Czech way. I will see you sometime soon, I suspect. Thanks for joining me. I'm Paul Check.